Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. For those of you who don't know, I started Grumpy Old Fart to express my political and social opinions and to say things that I felt needed to be said. Unfortunately, YouTube, YouTube started giving me strikes. As a hedge against this happening, I have created backup YouTube channels, Grumpy Old Gamer and Grumpy Old Ufologist. I also created a channel called Grumpy Old Fart over on Rumble, a free speech alternative to YouTube. You can find all of my stuff there, including my political opinion and current events. The link to my Rumble channel, as well as links to, to let you order my books, are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Um, I'm doing an Outlaw Trails story titled Red Rock. Um, I, I, fair warning, I, I'm still getting over my cold, so if this, uh, if you know, if my voice sounds scratchy or if I break out into a cough, bear with me. I'm getting over it, it's just, it takes me a while. This is my annual cold. <clears throat> After the Range War, uh, from uh, rain, the, 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 the title of the video was Range War. After the Range War, the four of us went separate ways. We're still playing under Bill, by the way. In reality, our work schedules changed, so we had to run separately. And, and it happens in games, you know. Earl and I stayed together and headed into New Mexico Territory. The year was 1868, and we reached the fictional town of Red Rock. Excuse me. We entered the cantina and sat down for a drink and a meal. Turns out, <clears throat> the local sheriff and his posse was extorting protection money from the local businesses. The quote-unquote lawmen were barely leaving them enough to stay afloat. And they were using violence and murder to make the point. Earl and I talked it over and decided that 5% from each business was plenty for the two of us. And since the quote-unquote lawmen were charging 50%, the cantina owner was more than agreeable. Within a week or so, the business owners had all come to a consensus and Earl and I were in business. <clears throat> the sheriff had four men working for him, so we figured to even the odds a bit. One of the men was sparking one of the local rancher's daughters, so on one of his trips out to, the, out to her place, Earl and his sharp's rifle sent him to a different location. I caught one of them in, in an alleyway and beat him down with an axe handle. <clears throat> that made the odds three to two. One of the sheriff's men liked to frequent the local house of ill repute. He somehow managed to drown in a bathtub. Imagine that. <clears throat> By now, of course, the sheriff knew something was going on, and he reasoned out that Earl and I were behind it, because we were the new people in town. He also figured that the odds were even at two to two. He didn't like those odds. He first offered to let us join his posse. We declined. Then he tried to, to poison us with bad whiskey. Earl became very ill and couldn't walk, but we both survived. Finally, he forced a showdown. Me versus the two of them. What he didn't know was that while Earl was, Earl was recovering, he couldn't walk. But he was still a great shot. And at close range, that Sharps 56 made really big holes in things. As it turns out, I walked out into the street with my pistol on my belt, my Henry rifle, and a scattergun. <clears throat> the two of them stood 50 yards away and tried to goad me into coming closer so that their pistols would be more accurate. The that last deputy there, his head exploded and he dropped dead. The sheriff lost control of his bodily fluids and jumped on the nearest horse. As he rode out of town, Earl shot him from the saddle. Earl was shooting from a hotel window, so they didn't even know he was there. They thought he was dead, as I understand it. We stayed on as lawmen there until Earl was healed up, and he, he stayed on as sheriff while I headed north into the Rockies. I'd saved a decent grub stake and decided to try looking for gold. And that's coming up in the next story. Now, <clears throat> I know a lot of those tactics seem underhanded and dirty, but again, when you're, when you're fighting for your life and when you're outnumbered, you, you take every advantage, and taking advantage in a fight is how you win the fight. Nobody likes fighting, but hey, you do what you got to do, right? And uh, since it's only a game, nobody's actually getting hurt. That's the beauty of role-playing games. Hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all.